Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to, we're gonna look at how you can install the Charge 8 in-game panel beta from Navigraph, which has been released a few days ago. So how to get it, it's simply, you go to this URL, I will post it in the uh, let's say description of this video, and there you will find the Navigraph Charge in-game panel zip archive. This will of course download the archive, so uh, let me go to it. And once you've got it, uh, you will see that it as I would say a single uh, folder so you can extract it either here or you can extract it directly into the community folder right so in my case the community folder is located in a different location so it's in, located in the uh, in CMSFS uh, community but it could be that in your case it's installed in the I would say or located in the default directory so keep that in mind that you extract it into the community folder once you've extracted it you will see, I would say, two Navigraphs. Uh, you will see uh, one which is called Navigraph uh, Charge, which is the default one, and you've got a beta one. So the recommendation is to remove the Charge one, and the Charge one can be either removed by selecting the folder and then by uh, deleting it, or you can, of course, again, go to the Navigraph data center, then go to the Microsoft Flight Simulator, and there you will find the Navigraph version 1.3, and then simply click on remove, which will remove the previous version of Navigraph. Uh, so that's how you can easily install the uh, new one, the beta one, and also I'd say have a look, uh, remove the old one because they could conflict with each other. So that's my recommendation to do. So I'll pause recording now, we'll start Flight Simulator and then we will have a look shortly at the new add-on. So we're back, Flight Simulator has just started. So where can you find the add-in? Well, the add-in is visible over here, right? So if you click here or hover over here, you will see Navigraph Charge Beta. So technically you can have both of them enabled, right? The normal one and the beta version, but I do recommend only to have one of them enabled. So once you click on it, right, you need to authenticate yourself. So keep that in mind, right? You need to have a subscription for this. Uh, so I'm gonna do that uh, as we speak. Uh, as you can see, automatically log on, which is really easy. So going back and that will bring this to me. So first of all, there are several things which are available, but there are also several things which are not available. That has to do with several limitations of the, I would say in browser uh, or in-game browser functionality, which is, I would say, not available. Uh, so over here, you can see all the flights which are there, right? You can see the uh, the imported flights, uh, the flights which are performed. You can uh, start from here and then create new flights, uh, both using the IFR or VFR, and then using the chart mode in STD or cow mode, and then also, of course, have the uh, cruising altitude, right? This is sim to simply, I would say, do a quick flight, right? So if I want to, I'd say, uh, fly quickly uh, or try to create a quick flight I can do it easily uh, by typing in the ICAO codes here right I can I can search for them and then I can simply say okay cows and then say add to route that will uh, be my origin and then I can define another airport uh, well which one shall we take well let's go a little bit more south and then uh, go to well Port Arangas, Aransas, Mustang Beach, uh, cross. And then we can say, okay, hey, what are the departures available? Then we can uh, select over here. And then you will see it sometimes it brings up the, I would say, the, uh, the in pain uh, keyboard. Not sure why it, what's causing that. And then simply click add route and that will uh, create a flight here. It will, in this case, will be a direct flight, right? Because I didn't add any, I would say, additional uh, waypoints. Uh, as you can see from this, you can uh, select the auto route option. And the auto route will give you an option to say, okay, hi, do you want to fly a low or a high altitude? Well, in this case, if I select low and then click on create it will create an automatic flight plan for me uh, based on the information. Uh, other things which you of course can do directly from here is I select the departure, right? If I press select, it will give me the departures. Uh, in this case, it's uh, per runway, right? So uh, runway uh, 18 Lima uh, to CRP, right? It from runway 18 Lima, it will show me exactly uh, what are the options are. And if you look at this screen, right, it shows me also the options over here and you can easily zoom in and then select the one which I would say suits the most. 
If you don't like it, you can still go back and press the cancel option. Uh, the other thing you can do is by uh, clicking on the, I would say, kind of map, you can find the different, I would say, routes, right? The standard terminal arrival route, but also the approaches, the taxi routes, uh, the standard instrumental departures, and the uh, ref. So all the charts which are available can be found here. And that makes it sometimes easier, right? Because sometimes you're, I would say, not familiar at the airport. And then you can, I would say, click on these uh, these panels and that will show you an overlay which contains, okay, hey, where's the airport or the airplane currently located? And if you're being instructed to go via C to G and then take this runway, it makes it easier to navigate using this in-browser instead of, I would say, flipping around between two of those, uh, I would say, screens. That's only av available for the ones which are shown here, right? Also the uh, low visib visibility uh, taxi route, you can enable it. And also the uh, A380 and Boeing 747, uh, eight ones which are approved. And then you can see the marks over here. That's for the charts. Uh, the information can also be found. If you go to the uh, information, you can see the information about the airport, the location, the elevation, the longest runway, and the magnetic variation. And also, of course, the type. Uh, Below that, there's some more information, such as the runways, right? You saw already that the longest runway was visible, but this one also shows me some more information, as well as, I would say, uh, it shows me the two knots and four knots. I'm not sure what that actually means. And you can see the, the bearing, and you can see the dimensions. If you click on the eye from India, you will see the, I would say, detailed information also, I would say, in a lower screen, uh, which is a nice addition. Uh, then from there, we can go to the meter data or to the TAF, if you prefer that one. Uh, it will give me the weather information about this airport. Uh, the comms, of course, the communication channels, which I can use, and also the NOTAM. If there are NOTAMs active, then it will show me the NOTAMs which are applicable to that airport. Charts. That's the one we already discussed. Uh, procedures, we didn't have a... Well, we had a look at them. Uh, but keep in mind that you can also, I'd say, select the arrivals and the approaches. But in this case, since we're uh, departing from Austin, uh, Bergstrom International Airport, does not make sense to use that one, right? So cool things. Uh, you can still hide the panel if you don't like it. Uh, or you can uh, get it back by pressing the options here on the uh, left side. So... That's, I would say, really cool. So you can easily schedule your flights using these options. And as you can see, the option over here automatically syncs the flight or the airport airplane location uh, with where you are from the flight. And over here, you can see the uh, the current flight, right? Which is the current flight we uh, just uh, configured. Uh, the cool thing is that you can press save as to save the flight, but you can also still edit it, right? So if you like, click on here, you can say edit, and then you can make the modifications to the uh, departure and arrival airport. What are other things? Well, you can press the uh, settings menu, and the settings menu allow you to use the virtual keyboard. That was the one which was popping up here. I'm not sure if it's really valuable in this case. For me, it isn't, so I switch it off. You can uh, change the interface skill as well as the team, as well as the uh, runway uh, length if you prefer to have it in meters instead of feet. Uh, other things which you can do is, uh, of course, sign out. You can change the chart mode, the default one, the auto start uh, and the auto follow options and the use large uh, skill map. The globe, as you might have seen in the... Uh, charge version 8 that's one is not available due to the limitations in uh, i would say in this browser window which is actually here so here ends this i would say how to how to install the add-on but also a quick tour about the navigraph charge beta uh, application which is a really nice one and definitely recommend you to have a look at it if you want to provide feedback then go to the forum post where you download it uh, this Navigraph Charge Beta version, which because it contains the instructions how to also provide uh, feedback to the team, which it's, I would say is always a recommendation to do if you're participating in Beta, right? Don't start complaining that it doesn't work because it's Beta, it's still work in progress. Here ends this video. I hope you liked it. If you liked it, then consider to use the like button. If you've got questions or comments, then feel free to post them in the comment box below. And if you want to stay up to date about new videos I'm posting, then make sure that you're subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.